Well, it's good to, good to have you with me today as we continue uh, looking in Psalm 11, uh, Psalm 11. And uh, uh, before we get into it, I would like to uh, just remind you of a couple of things. Don't forget, uh, this Sunday will be a reopening for church services, and we'll have just the Sunday morning service at 1030. Uh, and so I want to encourage you to be in your place. We'll have, if you show up a little early, we'll have some coffee and donuts for you. Uh, and uh, have, have just a brief time of fellowship there before the service. So that'll be a coffee and donuts uh, before the service. Service starts probably at 10.30. I hope you'll be there. Uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, seeing you once again, our church family. And I am just so excited uh, about it. It's hard to believe uh, that uh, we are two, two months removed from our last time together. And, uh, uh, and we've made it through. Uh, and uh, there's been a lot... Um, uh, a lot of talk about in the news recently about church being essential, uh, and it very much is essential. Uh, Jesus is essential to to our lives uh, as Christians, and and for the world, Jesus is essential. Without Jesus, uh, we have nothing. Uh, and I just wanted to to pose this thought to you, uh, and so just something to think about: uh, if church is essential, okay. How essential is it to spread the good news of the gospel? Uh, that truly is essential. You see, meeting together here in, in this church building is great. You know, the Bible tells us, uh, and I was reminded of this yesterday, that we're not to be forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. And so I want to encourage you as we, uh, as we come together once again to be in your place. But uh, let's make soul winning essential. Let's make telling people about Jesus essential. Uh, and uh, we've had great opportunity to give the gospel uh, during uh, this pandemic uh, uh, through uh, social media, through YouTube and such. Uh, and it's been a great, uh, great opportunity. And I think we've reached many people. Uh, and uh, through the liking and sharing and commenting on, uh, on our daily devotion videos as well as our services. And we look to continue that. Uh, but I want to encourage you. Uh, to be faithful in telling people about Jesus Christ by uh, giving out gospel tracts uh, as you have opportunity uh, and uh, uh, and such the like. And so I want to encourage you along those lines. Church is essential, but gospel preaching is essential. Telling people about Jesus, that is essential as well. Uh, and we don't want... Um, uh, we don't want uh, our, uh, our church becoming the, the idol. Uh, we don't want the building to become the idol, uh, and 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 I understand uh, the thinking there and and the importance of getting together. Don't get me wrong, uh, but if that is the end all, then we're missing part of it. Uh, we are to come together, uh, but we are to tell people about Jesus. Uh, we are to be faithful in our testimony and our witness. So, just wanted to share that with you today. Let's be sure. And tell people about Jesus Christ. Uh, we're in Psalm 11, uh, and let's look down at verse number one. We'll read uh, uh, just a couple of the verses today. Shared with you the last couple of days uh, some thoughts, uh, and uh, it's amazing how uh, the Lord brought us to this passage for uh, times like Memorial Day and yesterday. Uh, but in Psalm 11, let's look back at verse number one. We see, uh, "In the Lord I put my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountains?" Uh, and so we we have nothing to fear. Uh, because our trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and and I want to encourage you. Let's not live in fear. Doesn't mean we live that we live um, uh, uh, foolishly, uh, but rather it's a call to living with wisdom. Uh, and so our trust is in the Lord. So we don't need to be uh, afraid of what man can do to us. Uh, and and so I want to encourage you. Trust the Lord in, in every facet, every area of your life, uh, because. We look at verse number two, and here's the reason why we need to trust. Verse number two says, For lo, the wicked bend their bow, they make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privately shoot at the upright in heart. Here's the reality of life. The reality of life is, uh, if, if you live for Jesus Christ, attacks are going to come. Uh, and we've seen in our country today, uh, churches that have opened up and... and uh, uh, and and have reopened and they've been attacked uh, by uh, by by the government by individuals they've been told to shut down uh, they've received citations they're being sued and so on uh, and that's going to happen 
uh, as we as we stay faithful to the uh, to the message of the gospel, as we stay faithful to Jesus Christ, attacks will come. If we live accord, you know, in in Psalm eleven verse verse number two, it says uh, uh, that they may probably shoot at the upright in heart. If we live for Jesus Christ, if we live righteously, attacks will come. In fact, in Job. Uh, chapter 11 and verse number one, or I'm sorry, in Job chapter 14 and verse number one says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Uh, and so as we live life, we know difficulties will come. Trials will come. Uh, and in, in Psalm 11 here, we're speaking specifically to attacks uh, coming by mankind. Uh, and so we must, uh, uh, and, and let, let's, uh, let's be honest here. Some of these attacks that, that we experience as Christians, uh, they're not just physical, but, but they're verbal attacks. Uh, and we must, we must be careful as Christians to, to not get caught up uh, in the uh, verbal banter that is, uh, uh, that is strewn out there, uh, but rather let's, let's uh, remain on point and let's remain focused on uh, what our calling is. Uh, and, and I'm not saying we don't take a stand for what's right. We don't take a stand for Jesus Christ. We must do that. Uh, but we must pick and choose our battles. We must exercise wisdom uh, in the battles that, uh, that we fight uh, and, and realizing that, that attacks are going to come. Uh, when we respond to different things, attacks will come. As we seek to open up a church on the 31st, I don't know uh, if attacks will come or not. Uh, I know that we've... Uh, uh, we follow the guidelines for two months now, and uh, other places are opening up, and uh, and we feel the need, and uh, uh, and we believe that we are we are more essential than uh, than uh, than other things and uh, gatherings that are allowed to happen, uh, and and so uh, pray for us here for wisdom, uh, and that if attacks do come, pray for wisdom there. Verse number three, as we uh, looked at yesterday, uh, if the mountains be destroyed, what can the righteous, I'm sorry, uh, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Speaking to, to our, our foundations, uh, being uh, in the Lord, and that's where that trust comes from, not trusting in ourselves, trusting in the Lord. Verse four, uh, the Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes, uh, behold, his eyelids try uh, the children of men. Uh, when when the difficulties come, when attacks come, we must run to the Lord. The Lord is in heaven. The Lord is in his holy temple, verse 4 says. The Lord's throne is in heaven. There's great safety in running to uh, Jesus, in running to uh, his throne of grace. And then it says, his eyes behold, his eyes, his eyes behold, his eyelids try, uh, the children of men. You know what? God sees all. God knows all. Nothing catches him by surprise. Uh, he knows uh, the thoughts and intents uh, of our heart. The Word of God uh, is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. We know that uh, man looks on the outward appearance. God sees the heart. God knows all things. God sees all things. Uh, this pandemic didn't catch him by surprise. Uh, it didn't. Uh, uh, God isn't up in heaven saying, oh man, what am I going to do now? Uh, you know, people, they're, they're not meeting together. Uh, uh, you know, people aren't uh, maybe as faithful in giving uh, uh, to churches and so on. There's, you know, and maybe people, they haven't had opportunity to share the gospel like before. What are we going to do? It didn't catch God off guard. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, through uh, our social media presence now, uh, we have connected with many people that normally we would not have connected with. And so it's a great opportunity uh, and it has has opened my eyes uh, to the importance of of an online ministry and so on. And we'll uh, and and prayerfully and Lord willing, we'll we'll develop uh, this ministry. Uh, but we cannot neglect the uh, the other ministries that God has has already called us to as well. God knows and sees all, and there's great comfort in knowing that nothing catches the Lord off. Guard. And while we're going to stop right there for the day, we'll finish out Psalm 11 tomorrow. Uh, but just some thoughts for you. Uh, when attacks come, don't panic. Go to the Lord. He knows all. He sees all. He's in heaven. Uh, and so let's run run to him during during these difficulties. All right. Uh, well, Lord bless you. Have a great day. Let's pray. We'll ask the Lord to help us uh, uh, throughout our day today. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your many blessings once again. God, we look forward to Sunday when we can come together together. 
uh, and, and worship you once again together as a church family. Uh, and then as we can stay true to what, what you have called us to do, our mission is to reach the world with the gospel of Christ. And as we come together, we get revived uh, and we, we get encouraged uh, by being with the brethren. Uh, God, may it embolden us to be more faithful than ever in our witness uh, of you. Bless us now as we go throughout our day today. Uh, and keep us safe in all that we do. And then also may we honor and please you in everything uh, that we do as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for being with me today. I uh, hope this was a blessing uh, and looking forward to getting together once again uh, tomorrow. Have a great day.